What's going on everybody? John with Refinery Fragrances back for another video. Today we're going to be talking about 40 Knots by Zerjoff. Before I get started, if you guys are not subscribed to the channel and you're interested in fragrance related content, please do consider hitting that subscribe button and also the bell icon for notifications for any future videos. Okay, so 40 Knots is a aromatic aquatic fragrance uh, that was released in 2012 by the company Zerjoff. Uh, this is part of their Join the Club collection. Um, from what I can tell, there is no uh, publicly listed note breakdown for this fragrance. Um, I was reading a little bit about it online and it looks like that these come with a card where you can actually register uh, online, I don't even know where, um, and they reveal the ingredients of the perfume there. Um, but I don't recall seeing a card uh, in my box and maybe I did, but I don't have it in my box now so i'm not sure uh you know exactly what the ingredients are but i'll give you guys kind of an idea of what i get out of it some of the notes that i pick up on but um yeah it's kind of a cool little thing and that's a part of the join the club concept is you get uh cards or you get a code with your fragrance and you can join an exclusive club of other people that uh join or that have fragrances from this collection so pretty cool idea like I said, 40 Knots is a part of Zerjoff's Join the Club collection, um, and each fragrance in that collection has a different concept attached to it. So this is a yacht club. Um, they have a fragrance called uh, Marquis that represents a theater club. Kind of Blue is about jazz. Um, Ascot Moon is a horse club. Um, Birdie is for golf lovers. You get the point. It's kind of like, um, you know, each fragrance represents a certain specific club, you know, yacht clubs, um, you know, a, a golf club, cigar clubs, all those kinds of things. And um, I feel like from what I've smelled from the line, they all uh, represent the names fairly well. One thing I want to say about this, though, is that this is listed as an aromatic aquatic fragrance. I am a little bit surprised by that. Um, I don't really get a ton of aromatic qualities or aquatic qualities out of this fragrance. Um, this has a salty accord, definitely, but it's not overly aquatic. It is not your typical aquatic. It's not something that, um, you know, I, I wouldn't think of a scent like this when, um, you know, the sea comes to mind or sailing comes to mind or anything to do with the beach or I wouldn't even classify this as a summertime fragrance. So I'll get into that right now. This fragrance, although it is uh, centered around the concept of a yacht club, it does not smell like a fragrance for spring and summer. This is a heavy, heavy, beastly fragrance that is dark and woody and slightly floral and yes, slightly salty, but it's not salty in that fresh aquatic uh, type of thing like Millicent Imperial or anything like that. It is actually quite the opposite. Uh, when you first spray it on, you're gonna get a heavy, heavy dose of rose. You're gonna get a, a very salty, slightly green rose, very powdery. Um, this fragrance is very reminiscent of Amber de Lee when you first spray it on by Dior. Um, and for those that have smelled it, you kind of get a glassy-like feel with Amber de Lee. It has this very, um, you know, effervescent, clean, musky, glassy quality running through the fragrance. You don't get that with this, but the rose that's in Amber Nui reminds me of the rose that is in here, and it does have some similar, similar qualities. Before I dive more into the scent, um, let's talk about performance on this thing. It is absolutely beastly. It is an animal. Like, I wore four sprays the other day. My wife is like, you could probably do two sprays. Um, and it just, I had sprayed it on probably around 10 a.m. that morning. Uh, got out of the shower, sprayed on four sprays, and by like four or five o'clock, she said it was still just a cloud around me. So this stuff is, you know, right in line with all the other Zerjoff fragrances or most Zerjoff fragrances. They're very, it's very, very potent. 
very, very loud. Um, let's talk about with that uh, seasons and occasions. I touched on this briefly, but I, I have to recommend this for fall and winter. Um, I can see some cool spring nights. I have been wearing it on some cooler spring nights and it's been great. Um, but if I had to pick some seasons, it would be uh, fall and winter for sure. And in terms of occasion, this smells pretty formal to me, honestly. It, it smells very upscale. Um, I could see this working well on a date also, um, but it's kind of a daring fragrance, I would say, for maybe a first date or just getting to know somebody it could put them off. It's slightly challenging uh, of a fragrance. It does lean a little bit powdery, which some people could perceive as feminine. I don't really feel like this fragrance is feminine, but I would say be careful, be cautious. If you're gonna wear this on a date, you just gotta be very sure of yourself, very confident. Um, but yeah, I would say formal and date are the ideal occasions for this. When it comes to price point for 40 knots, this is an unbelievable value for money. This bottle, which is a 50 ml bottle, runs you $205. Um, when it comes to the uniqueness and the quality and the performance on this, the packaging is stunning, which I'll give you a look at here in a minute. Um, $205 is such a bargain in my mind. I mean, I've spent over $200 on fragrances, um, you know, that are much less quality, that perform half as good as this. Um, and the presentation is just something that I would expect in something that's like $300, $400, $500, and they deliver that at a $205 price point. I, I'm, I'm, I love that. I love that they're giving you just all of this quality, they're giving you so much value um, for what you're putting out. With that being said, I wanna give you a little bit of a closer look at this presentation here. So look at that, absolutely gorgeous. A lot of people have been asking for sprays, so I'm gonna give you guys a spray. Okay, awesome sprayer, pressurized atomizer, um, so you can kind of control how much you spray. Uh, really, really awesome. Uh, this bottle, this blue tinted bottle here, this is actually not colored glass. This is actually, uh, or it's not, um, there's no colorant used is what I'm trying to say. This is actually blue glass, uh, which is apparently a rare thing. I didn't even know that something like that existed um, until uh, Alan at uh, Beverly Hills Perfumery, shout out to Alan uh, there. He sold me this fragrance and he let me know uh, about that and apparently it's a pretty rare thing. Just a cool little, cool little nugget there. Um, and then the box is just, I, I was not expecting this. Um, this wasn't my first Zerjoff. I had bought Herba Pura um, before this, but uh, the packaging is way different on uh, Herba Pura. So, comes in this glorious purple bottle. Got Zerjoff on the bottom there. And then it opens up, and this looks like tissue paper in here. It's actually not. It's like a, a cloth of some kind with a gold in, the gold is embossed, or the Zerjoff name is embossed in gold throughout, uh, throughout the fabric. And then you open it up and uh, the fragrance sits in there like that. It's just gorgeous. I mean, the, everything is just, there's so much attention to detail. All the stitching on the inside of here, I'm not sure if you can see that, but there's stitching on the inside. This actually comes out, which I'm assuming serves the purpose of being able to display your fragrance laying in here, maybe on your, um, you know, your dresser or wherever you store your fragrance, uh, hopefully in a dry and cool and dark place. But um, yeah, just awesome attention to detail. Got the X in there. Really cool. Was not expecting this level of presentation at this price point. Awesome. Let me talk a little bit more about what this fragrance smells like. So like I'd mentioned, you get a kind of a salty, rosy, powdery, woody fragrance when you first spray it on. Um, it, it's really nice and um, it does lean mildly feminine in the opening. This is a unisex fragrance, but as you as it dries down, it starts to get deeper and darker and richer. And I have to say, out of every bottle in my collection, this has the most drastic um, change over time from the top to the dry down. It is the most drastic development I have. It is 
just the complete opposite of linear. It goes from that powdery floral thing down to this uh, deep, ambery, woody, sweet type of a fragrance. And the rose kind of, it's in there, it lingers, but it's not nearly as prominent. So this, I love this fragrance uh, for this reason alone. This reminds me of two of my favorite fragrances of all time. Amber Nui by Dior, which I had mentioned. And as it dries down, it really reminds me of Creation E by Roja Dove. Um, I love both of those fragrances. Creation E is possibly my favorite fragrance of all time. It's neck and neck with Amber Oud by Roja Dove. But, um, you know, I, I love both of those fragrances so much, so I can't hate on this. I, I obviously enjoy it. Do I think that this fragrance is better than those fragrances? Uh, probably not. I, I probably don't think that. I still think this is a phenomenal, phenomenal fragrance. And if you like the concept of maybe Amber, uh, sorry, Amber Dewey and uh, Creation E having a baby, this would be the baby. And uh, it's just a really nice development um, from, from the top to the dry down. It does have those reminiscent qualities of uh, Amber Nui and Creation E, but it does its own thing. There are facets throughout it that really give it, um, you know, it, it takes its own direction. But if I could give you an idea of what it smells like without having a note list, that would be it. Okay, so overall, what do I think of 40 Knots? I really love 40 Knots. I think it's an awesome fragrance. I think it's mildly misleading in the marketing. This does not remind me really of an aquatic at all. Um, it reminds me of like an oriental, um, just heavy, vanillic, woody, uh, ambery type of a fragrance that is really nice for fall and winter. And if you like those fragrances that I had mentioned, um, you know, I think you're really gonna like this a lot. Um, people love Amber Nui, but they uh, kind of complain about performance with it sometimes. This will fix any problems you have there. It is just a nuclear cloud of fragrance. Um, and, and it's just the utmost quality from the juice to the presentation. I think it's worth every cent that you're gonna pay for it. You can buy this at full retail price and just know you're getting a really great value for money. You're getting quality through and through. So I would highly recommend that you at least sample this and see what you think. That is all for me on 40 Knots by Zerzhoff. I wanna hear from you guys. Have you tried 40 Knots? Have you sampled it? Do you own it? And I wanna know what are some of your favorites uh, from Zerjoff. I wanna look more into their line. Um, they have a lot of amazing offerings and I wanna hear what you guys are loving from them these days. Um, let's get a conversation started down in the comments and I will see you guys soon.